Imagine being in a, a professional sports league, right? But you don't have any sort of say. No, no players have any sort of say in the actual sports league. Actually, that's not too far off from the actual sports leagues. But imagine just, you know, being the backbone, being, being the workforce of something. Man, it starts to sound like blue collar. And not having a say in anything that goes down. Hold on, why is this like a repeating theme? But so that's the situation we're dealing with here with Ethereum and EIP-1559. The biggest impact that this Ethereum improvement proposal has is on miners who they're actively work, working to ditch because they say that proof of work and mining is destroying the world, man. But that's called decentralizing a network and securing it. Bitcoin mining is a decade old and has never failed it because it's, the miners are incentivized to be good actors and secure the network for a profit. You know, you're, you're, you're renting out, you're decentralizing your service, you're decentralizing the coin distribution. It's going to all these different miners and so forth. But anyway, Ethereum is looking to ditch that and they have ignored the cries of literally like anyone associated with mining. Uh, there's no good actor that's in, that's in favor of EIP-1559. And I say this as an Ethereum miner, as well as a huge decentralized finance DeFi user and really investor. We have tons of videos here on the Bosscoin YouTube channel, which you should subscribe if you have not already. Talking about Ethereum mining, it's actually what got us into cryptocurrency to take the full plunge. And we have tons of video talk, videos talking about DeFi. So I couldn't be caught between you know these two sides more than ever. But the sad fact of the matter is that EIP-1559 is not going to reduce gas fees. It won't. It's just going to kill mining profitability and make ASICs even more dominant on the Ethereum mining algorithm application specific integrated circuit miners short answer reduces the decentralization and security of the network and gas fees are still going to be high so let's kind of talk a little bit about what's going on and how they just ran this through even though like every crypto mining youtuber ever was like yeah we don't like eip 1559 here's a bunch of reasons why but hey there's at least one thing we can all hopefully agree on is that tails is the cutest pup in the world because this is 10 seconds of tails and what we do here always on the vosco youtube channel And just to be clear on this, to make a formal statement, I guess for whatever it's worth, I'm not recommending you do or don't do anything with your Ethereum mining hash rate. I was already on Ethermine before this whole pitch to bring 51% over there. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting nonetheless, but you know, again, no financial advice here, no impact. You do whatever you wanna do, seriously. Here's a quick message from our month's video sponsor, Compass, who are aiming to become the best marketplace for the purchase of Bitcoin mining ASICs and the best place to find cheap power prices at verified mining co-location facilities around the world. Mine with Compass with our link in the video description below. Ethereum's IP1559 fee market overhaul greenlit for July. Even though we all cried out and said, we're farmers, we're miners, we don't want our crops to be reduced. And they said, we don't care, dude. We're the developers and we're bag holders. We're moving to proof of stake with Vitalik. It was fun, but we're done. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, well, you know, big news regarding this is basically a proposal here is to move over 51% of the hash rate to one specific mining pool, kind of as a show of force. You know, are miners going to be leading a 51% attack? Uh, the answer is no, or at least that's not the plan. But giving that mining pool the ability to do that, uh, technically it could happen. I actually already moved my miners from uh, F2 pool over to Ethermine. And you may be thinking, but why? Well, you know, I'll, I'll gladly tell you why. You know, I've been consistently mining Ethereum for a long time here on F2 pool, over 24 pages down there, good amount of ETH mined and all of that. But they say, this is like, I, I really don't like the way they said this. Like, staying on the bright side of history, IP 1559. Uh, you know, it's just like, it's like propaganda. Like we're, what is there a war? 
We'd like to present detailed clarifications on our support of IP1559. And so Chun Wang, founder of Steakfish and co-founder of F2 Pool. Is there a bias there? Proof of work 2.0? I don't know. I meant to say I meant to say Ethereum 2.0, but anyway so let's run through this and kind of get to the point right they say basically uh oh, gas fees um okay all right q 1559 supposed to be to the rescue right contending why they support okay so ecosystem stakeholders contributing their own ways miners will benefit from increasing usage of ethereum despite block rewards dropping uh, from 30,000 ETH daily in 2016 to 13,000 ETH daily today. So keep that in mind. You mine less Ethereum than ever, but it is more valuable than ever. So, you know, per this article, and this is this is about accurate, is about $23 million worth of Ethereum mine per day at about current prices. There's this whole, you know, nonsense minor extractable value thing, like this, this MEV term that's been thrown around. I'm so sick of, you know, just BS terms. I mean, my gosh. I think this feedback's really weird. Another reason that they believe IP 1559 is necessary because of market conditions, there's a high likelihood that its inclusion has been priced in. Oh, I thought you were a mining pool, but I guess you're a bit more than that now, huh? The main pitch here is basically that it makes gas fees more predictable with the base fee and that you can try to price your transaction along with that base fee and be more likely to be included. It's led by Tim Biko, Carter of Bits Be Trippin' went on the call and they shafted him. It's the same old story. It's, I'm not surprised. It's not news. Um, and I'm not here to sound like a bitter miner. You know, it's it's really it just needs to be talked about simply. Um, so let, let's let's answer some like you know top questions. You know, how does it impact? It, will Ethereum still be mineable? Yes, absolutely. Ethereum will still be mineable. They have the Ethereum 1.0 blockchain, the original blockchain, the proof of work mineable blockchain. This is that blockchain. It will continue to be not mined. They have the Ethereum 2.0 blockchain that is running in conjunction with Ethereum 1.0 currently, and validator notes basically ethereum stakers are earning rewards on that blockchain so it will continue to coexist for a while and we have a full-blown video talking about all this but in that video i estimate when will ethereum mining end you may have saw that article it says late 2021 early 2022 i would be I'd be a little surprised if it happens in 2022. I expect 2023 because Ethereum is never on time with their roadmap. What 1559 does is probably gonna reduce Ethereum mining profitability by about 30%. But a lot of people don't realize that by reducing this profitability, graphics cards become less profitable. And graphics cards, GPU mining, are less efficient for mining Ethereum than the newer ASIC specialized Ethereum mining hardware which is hard to get and all produced by shady China companies that jack up the price whenever they feel like it, which is a lot in this market. And machines that cost a couple hundreds, several hundred dollars to make, maybe a thousand dollars, being sold for like twenty, thirty thousand dollars It's kind of absurd. But it's not all that absurd when some of these miners make $200, $300 per day. From everything I've been able to tell is that 1559 will not solve gas fees, which are a huge concern, which we talk about in literally every freaking decentralized finance DeFi video here on the channel. So basically it's gonna shaft miners and their mining profitability. And a lot of people build out rigs. I understand it, I do it. But you may notice I don't do many GPU builds here on the channel anymore because every project just craps on GPU miners. Did you know that Ethereum was supposed to be ASIC resistant, yet ASIC miners dominate? dominate and are the most efficient miner on their network here a couple years later but they you know they hate miners they say they're ruining the earth and they're trying to move to proof of stake to go green and all of that it's just it's really not that simple and you compare this energy usage to anything just say visa it will peril in comparison this decentralized movement of cryptocurrency empowers the world empowers the people instead we're just going to move to a bunch of server farms like VPSs and stuff like that at, say, uh, date, like huge data centers. Instead of running a GPU mining rig out of your house or turning on your gaming rig and decentralizing the network and earning some passive income along the way, it's just so frustrating and disappointing. I'd like to take a brief moment to thank today's video sponsor, BlockFi, because honestly, 
not like paid to say this i really like their app they're based out of the us super safe secure cold storage custody of the coins by gemini exchange blockfi is backed by winkle voss capital i mine my cryptocurrency straight into the blockfi app and instantly start earning passive income interest on all the coins i mine when i take profits i take profits into my blockfi and then earn 8.6 percent on my stable coins like usdc and gusd and you can get up to 250 dollars for free if you use our link in the video description below normally a mine just right into my blockfi interest account so i don't have to pay additional transaction fees to move stuff around and really just burn my money up but I actually wanted to mine directly to my MetaMask for a little bit to replenish some of my Ethereum because I've been burning so much Ethereum up on transaction fees with DeFi and all that. Regarding all the buzz about people moving to Ether mine, uh, it's trying to put a, like a show of force there with 51%. Seven days ago, it was about 85 terahash. And as of right now, it's about 85 terahash so even though everyone's trying to get all hyped on twitter and even with 381 retweets and almost a thousand likes it's still not enough i'd like to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor trade race manager which is the first crypto gaming manager powered by the ioi token as well as nfts non-fungible tokens and you can already get it on the Google Play Store. So what's an NFT car anyway? So there's a limited amount of cars, but unlimited amount of income. So you collect these unique NFT cars because every NFT non-fungible token is unique and lives on the blockchain with verifiable ownership. So you can basically see the car value as well as the daily stakes that uh, it can earn. Staking rewards for your cars. Staking is a feature that allows owners of Trade Race Manager collectibles to earn rewards from them in the form of their token, the IOI token. So if you own a car collectible, you can stake this and for the period that it is staked, you will earn IOI. The amount of IOI earned will be dependent on the total amount of cars staked. What is the IOI token though, right? It's a deflationary multi-utility gaming token. So we come down here, we look at the token metrics. So you can see their ecosystem incentives make up basically 50% of their distribution. It looks like they're going to burn about 25% of their, those tokens, thus the deflationary mechanism. So if they are burning these, then the other ones that exist should potentially raise in value. Private sale, public sale, reserving partners, team with the time lock and reward for players. Now that's what I'm talking about. So they've got a 100 million supply, 50 mil burning plan, 18 mil for the players, as well as the associated quantities with the sales there. The coolest part about their token is that basically you play games to mine their token and then you stake their IOI tokens or NFTs and you can earn even more of them. So at the end of the day, you know, will they be valuable? Where does that come from? Well, if they're out here making good games, they keep burning tokens, it will inherently generate value and people would potentially want to buy it, even if they're just addicted to playing those games. Learn more about IOI and the Trade Race Manager in the video description below. Ethermine is opposed to EIP 1559. They held this poll and basically on uh, a couple months ago, they said, we've been observing the situation with the community. We'd like to state that Ethermine is against adopting EIP 1559 in its current state because they believe that the future will be at risk. Reducing the block rewards over the past years has reduced, uh, you know, made it riskier for these transitions as they move. Uh, there's less at stake for miners. They've been supporting Ethereum with its perfect imperfection since Genesis and would like to encourage developers to look into solutions that do not rely on fee burning in order to get the buy-in of the miner community. Uh, basically, uh, Tim down here proposes an alternative and you transfer these revenues to one or more miners of other blocks. Bits be tripping. Carter has a bunch of videos talking about this stuff. Son of a Tech also has like several videos completely geared towards this and, and red panda mining i mean it really everybody you know everyone who covers mining they're covering this because how can you ignore it uh, i invite you to check out their channels to check out their content if you want to hear another opinion and just kind of learn more to put it simply I i'm not surprised um that this i mean i've been fighting this battle for years and losing for years the developers i mean it's real simple in my opinion when you think about it none of the developers mine none of them they're all big Ethereum holders. They benefit greatly from proof of stake. They benefit nothing from proof of, uh, from proof of work. Why would they care about mining? 
they're, they're, you know, humans are incentivized as naturally via greed, and there's no benefit for them, you know, personally, financially, for mining. Huge benefits for them if they reduce mining profitability and also just simply get rid of mining sooner than later if, if they can accomplish that. This is no surprise, but it is official that they have they have greenlit EIP 1559 to be adopted in the next Ethereum hard fork. And so within about a month, that will happen. You may think, you know, I, I wanna say one other thing. You may think that, okay, I'm gonna dump my Ethereum because I'm mad. And a bunch of other people are gonna dump it. And that's gonna bring the price down. The sad fact of the matter is, is that EIP 1559 will likely increase the price of Ethereum. And that's my prediction without going on and on about it, is that it will increase the price and miners that act emotionally and impulsively will likely sell their Ethereum for less than they could sell it in the near future. This isn't financial advice or anything like that, uh, but to be honest, one of the most interesting pieces of advice uh, in crypto is oftentimes crypto will kind of do the opposite of what is logically going to make sense and kind of just what you'd expect. Uh, so one of the many lessons I've learned over the years, one of the other many lessons I've learned is that you need to subscribe to the Boss Coin YouTube channel. You need to hit the thumbs up and you need to leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on good old IP 1559. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.